I've been seeing all these videos recommended to me lately of various devlog adventures or game development journeys and whatnot, so I thought, that looks like it would be a fun idea. At least it would be a break from the semi-monthly devlogs that I make. And it works out nicely, because around this time a year ago is when I actually started development on my game. So why not give myself some extra work and make a video out of it? I first got the idea when I was nearing the end of developing my first real game, Vector Elite. This was a game I spent about a year and a half making and put a lot of time and effort into. If you haven't heard of Vector Elite, it's probably because it failed miserably. But that's okay, because I had such a fun time developing it and it didn't really have any ambition of it being successful or making me lots of money. can't really pin down why it failed so hard, but there are many factors that probably didn't help, like making the game in a very niche VR puzzle genre and having literally no budget for advertising. But that's all beside the point, because when I was near the end of this project, I started to focus on what my next one would be. I had five or six half-cooked ideas in my head, like I imagine almost every game developer does, but there was one idea that really stood out to me. I got the idea back when my brother and I were playing an underrated game called Pit People, which if you don't recognize, is a game by Behemoth, the people behind Castle Crashers. Pit People had very unique turn-based gameplay that I had never really seen before, and was really interested in. I'm not really a fan of tabletop or strategy games, but for some reason I really found myself enjoying this one. And unfortunately, while it was really fun, I found it fell short in a lot of areas. Like because all the characters were set in stone and kind of did their own thing, there wasn't really much variation in strategy or gameplay between them. So my ambition was to create my own game with an improved battle system, inspired by Pit People. And that lengthy backstory leads me to the start of development. As I stared at this empty project, I realized something. I'm not very good at coding. I'm good enough to get what I need done usually, but this would require building some sort of hexagonal grid-based navigation system from scratch. So, what does someone in my position do? Let somebody smarter than me do all the hard work. I found this tool on the Unity Asset Store that seems like it would pretty much be what I need. And it was. After a while of playing around with it and figuring out how it works, I was able to make my own prototype project with characters and animations. I was also able to establish rules like what kind of tiles the character could walk on, and I could also limit them based on stamina. So I'm off to a pretty good start. Now that I had some of the basic functionality in the game, I needed to make a character. I wanted to make a good character, one that really represented what I was going for with the game, but somehow I ended up making this thing instead. I'd never really done anything that required artistic ability before, so I struggled quite a lot with the character. And the problem doesn't end here, as you'll see later. But I added this little guy to the game as the main character for the time being, and gave him some of his own animations. I also added these scuff looking card designs and laid them out in the player's hand. The player will now draw a random hand from their deck every time. And I made it so that the first card they draw will always be a character card. I also added various UI elements that would evolve over time. This is also the point where I started to experiment with character equipment. From the start I wanted characters to be able to equip various items throughout the game that would change their stats and alter their uses. This was the first step in that process. You can really see my artistic ability displayed in these. So what's the next logical step in the project? Going straight into multiplayer of course. At the time when I was doing research on it, I read somewhere that it was much more difficult to implement multiplayer in the late stages of a project. So why not implement them at the start? Many reasons, as it turns out. But I won't get into that right now. After my pea brain started to understand the concepts of multiplayer a little better, I was able to strategically implement scripting material to make my game function in multiplayer. In other words, I basically guessed and hoped I got lucky on what worked and what didn't. Eventually though, enough of my game stopped breaking to the point where it looked like I almost had a game. I was able to create two instances of the project running on my PC and they both drew their own cards from the deck. Their actions and movements also reflected across both games. This was a huge win for me because I wasn't confident I would be able to even implement multiplayer at all. But this was also just the beginning. Soon after is when my game started to get its identity. I created my own hex shape, which is much more difficult than you might think. And I made a simple tile with a new shape. I also updated my UI with some of my own sprites that I made, so now they look slightly less scuffed than before. I added new health and stamina bars that I also drew myself. There was also this idea that I experimented with where the character would change his animations based on what type of weapon he had equipped. All in all, the game was starting to look kinda unique, at least in my eyes. Around this time was the first attempt at changing the character look. I had this vision for adding character customization to the game, and the current character was just too simple. So I spent some time making this kinda crash test dummy looking character. I thought it resembled the first character enough to emulate the same kind of vibe, but was more complex, so there was more potential there. And now I wanted to work toward making customization for the player. This means making a main menu where the player can choose to edit both their deck and the characters. I added it so that the player can now add cards to their deck from different categories and remove them. To do this, I had to implement saving, which was way more complicated than it needed to be if you ask me. To keep it simple, you didn't can't serialize anything too complex, like a game object. Instead, you would have to save all the values of that game object, and sort of initialize those values when you loaded it in. So in my case, when I'm trying to save all these card objects, I can't just save the cards themselves and reload them. So in other words, it's big dumb and give big headache. Also around this time, my brother was chipping in and trying to help with the game. 
I gave him the hex shape that I designed and he made several grass variants of them. He also drew some trees and bushes. I took everything that he did and I put it together to make a prototype map of sorts. Pairing this with the new character and animations, and slowly but surely we're headed in a direction. What direction that is, I don't know, but it's happening. September is when I decided to start developing the game with the idea of making devlogs alongside the project. So if you've watched any of the devlogs, then the game might start to look familiar. I changed up a lot of the UI and also added some for the character to give the player more information on them. I fixed up the main menu so it's not so bland anymore and then started working toward the next big step, joining into a match from the main menu. I needed two players to be able to queue together from the main menu and then load into the same team, while each being assigned their own team. I did manage to accomplish this, but with many changes I would need to make in the future, nothing was going to work forever. Around this time is when I really started stepping up my art game. Because I was going to make stuff that would be maybe more permanent and less used for testing, I started taking a little bit more time with each drawing. This was also the point where I figured out the look that I want the game to have, and that was heavily inspired by a lot of the stuff that my brother and I used to do as kids. Whenever we got a shoebox or something, we would craft our own game out of the cardboard and whatever else we could find. I wanted to emulate that childlike imagination and turn this into a game that looks like it was handcrafted by kids just trying to make a game and, you know, have fun. So I had this inspiration to make my UI look like it was made out of cardboard, and I started making a bunch of different pieces to try out. And while I was at it, I also made the cards look like they were made out of cardboard and maybe like construction paper on top of it or something. And then I proceeded to make pretty much every aspect of the game look like it was reflecting this new style. And I think it worked out pretty well, in hindsight. It's a unique art style that really matches the theme of the game. I made several new types of cards, from buffs that would give extra crit rate to debuffs that would poison the enemy character. I also wanted to add heal cards that would heal stuff. That kind of seems self-explanatory, so I'll move on. This next chunk of development was probably the busiest in the whole project for me. This is when I really went into overdrive. I was working for a long time, almost every day, to add things and try out new ideas. And this was the second time that I attempted to redesign the character. I still wasn't too satisfied with the current design. He was okay, but I didn't think he looked quite right for the game. I experimented with some beefier looking, swole designs, but ultimately he just stood out a lot, so I scrapped him. Maybe he and my original character can be like some kind of summon in the future, I don't know. I also experimented with trying to remove the joints from the character to make them look more like an action figure. I even went as far as studying some action figures like some old G.I. Joes and stuff to see if I could find what worked. And the result of all my hard work was this abomination of a spaceman. Ideas almost always work better in my head. In the end, I ultimately gave up on the redesign idea because I couldn't find anything better. I'll revisit it in the future. Next, I started working on adding in character customization. I added many options to the character screen with the plan to add more, but I started with just the eye and the mouth customization because those were simple and easy. I also tried out this idea I had of making the character's stats customizable to allow for more specific builds and playstyles, and I got this information to save and load on each of the characters. From the start of development, I knew that eventually I'd have to implement AI, just some computer type opponent that the player would have the option of facing. And this is the aspect of the game that I was the most intimidated by, pretty much since the start of the project. I could barely even make my own characters move on purpose, let alone have some sort of an algorithm that could draw cards, spawn characters in, use those characters to move and attack, and use the cards that they have available. But I had to try. Making the character spawn in wasn't too difficult. I just had to make the AI pick a random spawn hex and play the character card that they have. Pathfinding, however, was a lot trickier. I had to take each individual character unit and then calculate the closest character to them on the enemy side, then plot the cath to that character from the current character, and limit them based on the amount of stamina they had remaining. In other words, the character had to go toward the other character. As for how the cards work, I made the AI go through each card in their hand and perform a little function on each card to determine if it was usable since the last card was played. For example, if it was a weapon card, it would check each of the characters in play and see if they needed a weapon. And if any of the characters needed a weapon, then that card was marked as usable. Then the AI would pick a random card from all the usable cards and play it. And it's not a very elegant way of doing things, but I have ideas to prove upon it later. I added spells to the game, too. I wanted a way for the characters to eventually have many uses beyond just attacking. So I added some spell slots which can hold up the three spells that they can use with stamina. These spells in the future could do many things like shoot a fireball, heal an ally, apply a buff or debuff, and more. Each spell has their own cooldown, so you can't really use a good ability too often, even if you had the stamina to do so. But I made it so you can equip two of the same ability if you want, to kind of have your own way of overriding the cooldown if you chose to play that way. At this point, I tried to change the character again. Yeah, again. I was starting to get this vibe from the game that it was like a tabletop game, in a way. And since everything else looks like it was made out of cardboard, I tried experimenting with the character to make it look like he was made out of cardboard too. Overall, I realized pretty fast that I did not like the cardboard look for the character. But one thing that I did like was the still look for the character rather than the animated version. 
It made it feel more like that piece in a tabletop game. So I tried to make the character look more like a character model rather than a piece of cardboard. Like a tabletop figurine or something. And this character worked a lot better for me. It didn't really feel so out of place anymore. And while I had this idea of a tabletop style, I wanted to try out a new map idea as well. I figured the hexagonal grid wasn't really necessary to visualize because you could pretty much tell where all the hexes were anyway. So I tried this look of a cruelly drawn board that would serve as the battlefield. Then I added to it by making a background that would look like a kid's bedroom. I still don't know if I prefer this look or the original hex map, but it's something that won't be too difficult to change later if I choose to. I don't know, maybe you could give your opinion in the comments or something on which one you prefer. But while I was on this idea, I realized I could make a much better way to spawn each character. Before now, I was giving the player random character cards every time they wanted to summon a character. But since I added the option to customize your character stats, this started to feel more RNG heavy than I'd like. And I'm the type of person that usually hates unnecessary RNG. I changed this by making it so every character is visible at the start of the game, and you can choose which character you want to draw instead. Then when you want to spawn them, it does a little animation to bring them into play from their position. So now the player has the freedom to choose any of their characters based on whatever cards they were dealt, and they don't get stuck with the luck of the draw. I started improving the menu look a bit and adding some settings to the game. I started with simple options that would be preferential to some people, like removing the curve from the player hand. I made it so the camera automatically focuses on whatever card or characters are being played at the time from the other team. This little feature really goes a long way in making the game feel nicer to play. I drew a sprite to represent the actual objective of the game, since what I'm using has been a placeholder since the start of development. Then I experimented with adding different structures to the map. It looks like hot garbage right now, but it's a process. After this I added music and sound effects to the game as well as settings for the audio sliders. Remember when I said earlier that there were many reasons not to implement multiplayer right at the start? Well, one of those problems is negligence. My lack of understanding created a lot of problems I have to catch up on now, and this may very well be my own unique experience in the matter, but I've had to spend a lot of time fixing up everything that's broken since I added multiplayer, rather than adding it in now. It's not the biggest deal, it just took me an entire week's worth of work and I hate making a multiplayer game and I shall never do it again so help me god. After I had all the gameplay mechanics working with multiplayer, I wanted to get two players to be able to join each other from different devices. And before long, I was able to get this to work and my brother and I were able to join the same game through a Steam connection. And that marks one year of development on my game, give or take. It's kinda neat to me how around the one year mark is when I made multiplayer fully work across two devices. I don't know, it's just kind of a cool milestone to hit after a year. All in all, I feel like I've made a lot of progress on my game in just one year, especially considering I'm a solo dev and not an expert by any means. But if you're still here, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider leaving a like or subscribing because that encourages me to keep making these. And if you have any tips or feedback, good or bad, I'd love to hear it. I want to make as good a game as possible. Lastly, if you're interested in the game, the Steam link will be in the description. Anyway.